Welcome back, State of the K2 Survivors. Your boy Kong Rex is Prime coming at you with Update 33 review. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Gonna be honest, right off the jump street, we're only gonna have a little bit of bad and a whole lot of not of ugly in this particular update because Under Labs has delivered us a very stable version of State of the K2 after an update, which is. Uh, I think a monumental step in the right direction. They actually took their time. Um, it's 1.5 years in the making because I remember beta testing this back last January. Not this January that just passed, uh, January before that. So 2022 January. And uh, we're now in May and it finally came out in 2023. I am not complaining because this version of State of Decay 2 is actually playable. I don't have too many issues. There are a couple little glitches that we're going to talk about. But we're going to save that for the end, for the bad section of the review. And, uh, you know, hopefully you guys stick around for that. Now, let's start by saying that uh, some of the things that have changed initially instead of the K2 now with this new update, it's going to be uh, how infestations interact with your community and with you in the game. The number one thing that we have to worry about now is that infestations are not going to be spawning on uh, randomly around the map. And they're not going to just sit there looking at you like nothing is happening. You can avoid them. It doesn't really, the only penalty you used to take from having an infestation uh, rise up around your map was your, that your morale level will go down and your characters will tend to fight and waste resources. That was your penalty for having them. Most people just didn't even mess with them. They just left them alone and dealt with the penalties. Now, with this new system, it actually makes the infestations the enemy. As I said in my first PTR stream uh, over over a year and a half ago, infestations are now the enemy, and they really are. Um, they actually make it so that uh, that the infestations are not just going to sit there idly and look at you silly. They're going to come after you. How they're going to come after you is kind of interesting because they decided to make the plague hearts the main source of the hordes of infestations. They're going to come at you. Now, there's going to be uh, hordes that are going to randomly generate around the map and they're just going to go around, you know, causing havoc, but they're not in, They're not going to attack you. Now, the ones that are going to attack you, again, are going to spawn from hearts. Hearts are now going to be dormant, which means they're not going to be spawning any infestations until you awaken them. How you awaken them is by either jumping and, and, and you know, and hitting the heart with some kind of melee weapon or some kind of ranged weapon. Or if you kill too many zombies in plague territory that are near that heart, it's going to also excite the heart and make the heart active. Until you do that, though, the heart will stay dormant for a prolonged period of time. The time is not, it's not really known right now how long it takes for them to awaken on their own. But according to Under Labs, the hearts will wake up no matter what. It's just, you know, X amount of time. Now, I was on the map for, I don't know, five or six hours and I never had a heart just wake up on its own. I had to excite the heart some way or the other by killing zombies or by hitting it physically. So that's what's, uh, what's been going on with me uh, in my current playthrough of Update 33. The other thing that uh, they changed in this update is how outposts are going to be uh, operating. Outposts back in, in the day you used to have like a safe zone where you can spawn your characters and you can bring resources to as long as they're not rucksacks. And that was pretty much the end all be all of them. They were just a place to, to store uh, your supply locker stuff in there. And then uh, with the previous update, they made it so that uh, you can use them to generate more income. And now the actual uh, outposts themselves are going to be used as defense, kind of like in State of the K1. If you guys played it, you were able to put uh, fire mines and used to uh, use them in that way. And the same thing now, it costs X amount of resources. I know in Lethal Zone, it's three ammo and 50 uh, parts to activate it for one hour. If you have chemistry, it's 1.5 hours. And if you have ammunition, it's three hours. So there are some bonuses towards uh, having uh, specific um, skill sets in your characters in order to benefit from those outposts. And those are pretty significant bonuses to use. And, you know, as I'm demonstrating the video here, it's really powerful. It's really good to have, especially if you can layer your, your home base uh, with a couple outposts or an outpost where it repels any attack as long as you keep that buff going. You really don't have to worry about infestations coming in there and attacking you because it will repel them. It will do it. 
So that's the that's a good thing. Now, one other cool thing they added in this game, which is something that I've been complaining about, geez, for like I don't know how long. If you kill a juggernaut or you kill a pharaoh in a plague territory, they do drop a an item. Rather that's ammo, rather that's a uh, that's a weapon. It all depends on the on the freak that you kill. I know I killed a juggernaut and it gave me a grenade launcher. So that's pretty that's pretty huge. Uh, of a bonus to kill um, it's very risky to do it in plague territory but a, a high risk a high risk high reward kind of situation um, if you're you know if you're willing to take the chance then you can wreak some pretty nice rewards i know i've heard of people even getting 50 cows off a juggernaut so um, that's pretty impressive uh, that is something cool um, and in a step in the right direction where Undead Labs rewards you for, let's say, killing an enemy that takes a lot of resources to kill, like a juggernaut. They're very, very, very spongy. It takes a lot of bullets. It takes a lot of explosives to take them down. The other thing that I want to cover is the new radio calls. There are radio calls where you can send out your actually uh, your community members to do a little mission, either surveying missions, which cost you fuel, and they'll they'll search out for all the infestations in your map, or you can call out on somebody to go out and attack the uh, nearby infestations, uh, the closest one to your to your homestead, and take them out as well. It also causes some resources to do that as well. And uh, the, the the other thing you have to worry about is that they're gonna be yellow infestations, which can spawn now infestations, and then when they become orange, that means they're close enough to attack your homestead. Those are the infestations that you really have to worry about because they're the ones that are gonna cause the siege to happen. So uh, you also get extra bonus for killing the orange ones as well. I know that you kill the yellow one, you get nothing, uh, but what you kill, the, whatever freaks are there. But if you kill a um, orange one, you get whatever the freaks there uh, in terms of influence, and you also get a bonus for killing the orange one. So Undead Labs is trying to reward people for uh, going after certain things in the game, which has kind of like been my biggest gripe in the game. Like there's no reward for doing anything spectacular. And now they're, um, they're, I think they're listening to the community in general, and I think everybody will agree that that is a step in the right direction. Now let's talk about the the ugly and the bad in this game. There are two big glitches that are happening in the game right now. One of them is an old glitch that uh, we've had for a long time, which is the, um, the zombie glitch, which if you throw a zombie at the base of a heart and you hit it with a couple bullets of whatever caliber, it's uh, like one or two shotgun shells would do it if you have a shotgun and you can kill just about any heart. You'll let it, uh, it does like this real splashy noise and then um, you'll see it like the heart's like uh, pulsating like it's being like bled and then it and it, it goes into phases and it dies. So that's kind of like one of the things. And the other thing, the other glitch that we have are that depending on the freak and sometimes depending on the uh, the amount of zombies around, sometimes the zombies kind of like freeze in place and do not do anything. So those are the two uh, big, uh, I, I would say big, but they're glitches that are that I've noticed in the update as of right now. And it doesn't happen all the time. Uh, the, the zombie glitches, you know, it's been that's been around for forever. But uh, anyway, guys, I think that pretty much covers the uh update review for now if you guys are interested in more of this content or only even interested in this content don't forget to subscribe to the channel smash that like button it goes a long way into helping this video transition to youtube gods and get into the algorithm's favor and other people and new people get to see this video and drop a comment below share this video with whoever you like thank you guys so much we support you guys have a great day or night light love and peace congrats is checking out